Hola, buenos días, profesora. Eh, buenos días, Melanie. Gracias. Eh, Gilberto Galván para 11 Diario. Profesora, pues preguntarle dos cositas rápido. Primero, ¿cómo ha sentido el equipo en estas primeras semanas de trabajo? Todavía sin encuentros amistosos, pero ya incluso hubo un trabajo en la playa. Y si me permite una segunda, en ese análisis que se tiene que hacer en la transición de una temporada a otra, ¿Qué áreas eh, ve usted que, digamos, pueda reforzar el equipo ya con, por ejemplo, Vania Villalobos como una baja del plantel? Gracias. We are at the beach, but we're uh, <laughs> we're uh, working very hard. But yeah, no, it's been an incredible first, uh, I would call this phase one of preseason. We are going on a break tomorrow for Christmas and family time. We really value that here, making sure the girls get uh, some time with their families. But looking back at this week, we did have half the group for a week because uh, we gave the six national team players who attended the March, uh, excuse me, the November camp. We did give them an extra week of time with their friends and family. So we have had a kind of a two different groups and then everybody together here in Puerto Vallarta. So uh, we have benefited from a great foundation from Apertura. Uh, we have started the preseason in a completely different way than we did last season, which is uh, fantastic. You know, a lot of the, the style of play, the identities, the processes, they're all in a good place and uh, foundations are there to be built on. So exciting for me as a coach. Um, we have really balanced the social connection with the group uh, this time around. We really need to deepen that connection uh, to really move towards a sixth championship. I think it's going to be about connection and the people and that's going to take intentional work. Question number two, uh, what are what would I like to build on from last season? You know, a lot. Um, the championship really doesn't, you know, confirm that we are the best footballing team in the country. I think we're a very good footballing team. I think we have uh, shifted a style of play from maybe direct, more direct football to more possession style football. But we need to reinforce our defending. I think we let in too many, too many goals that were preventable from individual and small group errors, collective errors, uh, areas, you know, where I feel we can dominate the game even more defensively. Uh, we have to be comfortable uh, without the ball as well. I mean, we saw that against America in the final. We won a game on a transitional moment from Jack Ovaya, you know, from a low press. So you start to see all the moments matter and uh, we need to reinforce defending. The attacking transition was quite good and the possession under high press. So building out of the back can be much, much, much better. So we need to get the players more comfortable uh, with pressure being pressured under uh, playing out under pressure. We need to increase those skill sets and those vision, that vision and awareness for them, uh, which is only going to come from, from hard work, dedication and intentional practice. Yes, coach, uh, profe, thank you for, for your time. And I wanted to ask if um, there was anything that you thought you could improve upon um, from, from last season. It seemed like there was like a lot of team effort. Um, you know, is there something you would want to see more from players individually or is it more focused um, on a team? Thank you. Yeah, I'll, um, I, I did touch upon a few of the things, but I do like what you asked uh, about the individualism there. And, you know, because we do have such strong individuals who have some of them and a lot of them have already won five championships. And I think the question we have to ask ourselves quite critically and the players do as well, when you've won half of the available championships, what are you playing for? It's a big question because you've done it. But really, it's the excellence we're, we're trying to achieve. And that high performer in all of us at the highest levels, we want to achieve more. What does that mean? Higher quality play. And yes, we are more focused on the individual this year, not to individualize and separate, but to pour into the individual to then give back to the group in a bigger and more exponential way. So it's a high, high focus for us to look at some players like let's take somebody like a mayor. You know, maybe a misconception could be that she's happy to be where she's at in her career, but she's not. She wants to improve in, in many areas and I won't expose her own, you know, that's for her to talk about. But uh, we have discussed and sat down the details of where she needs to bring her game to another level. So when you have one of your top players so, so hungry for more, it's a great message to say that we're far from finished. Um, and yes, there are many, many team you know, units and individual themes, uh, but the individual is going to be of highest priority for our staff. We're going to be pouring into the details this year. Muchas gracias, Melanie. Profe, buen día. José Subizarreta para Podium Deportes y por ellas. Eh, profe, dos preguntas rápidas y chiquitas. La primera, eh, 
¿hay algún plan después de este receso navideño de algunos partidos amistosos previo al arranque del, del torneo? Y la segunda, ¿en qué porcentaje ahorita encuentra su equipo, ahora sí, de cara a la temporada? Muchas gracias. Yeah, great. Uh, yeah, we've just completed a, a match against the Puerto Vallarta Club Boys here, U15. Uh, looked like grown men, which was fantastic. Uh, you know, I really appreciate the competition against league opponents, which we will aim to have one, a league opponent, uh, January 2nd. We are looking to to kind of finalize that right at the minute here. We're, we're almost there. Um, so I see value in that, but I also see value in being stretched. So I really do like to train with boys, play against boys. Um, we had a match that was periodized, so it was only uh, 80 minutes of football. Players got up to 50 minutes just to start, but 50 minutes felt like 60 to 70 minutes because of the opponent so yes we are work you know working slowly to get the girls back into 90 minute fitness uh, that doesn't come overnight uh and we're working hard to to do that and we'll be ready by you know january 9th when we play atlas at home uh we will be ready to fire and uh we're very excited for it so yeah we're working we're working well and i think the team is right around there 60 to 70 percent of, of where we're gonna be Um, and that's, I think, yeah, quite normal for our planning. Sí, gracias, Melanie. Compañeros, buenos días. Carpenina, buenos días. Lupita Murillo de Espartar SMX. Y me permites igual dos preguntas rapidísimo. La primera sería, con esto que nos estás comentando, ¿estás buscando refuerzos para tu defensa y serían del mercado extranjero? Y la segunda sería, ¿qué le vas a pedir a Santa Claus? Gracias. Are devastated at uh, Bianca's ACL. It is part of the game. Um, she's working hard to get back. Uh, we will miss her. She was a starter, a titular. She was somebody who we relied on heavily uh, for our success last season. But uh, let's you know not forget we have Anika, Nati, Villarreal, and Hannah Guterra. So there's there's quite a depth in the back uh, with the center backs. We we have uh, Chris, we have Feral, Espinosa, and we also have of course Gaitan. Um, which is fantastic. So yeah, in terms of roster depth, I think we're in a good place. Um, we do need to to improve our defending generally, but it's not specific to those players. I think it's more, you know, the team and the units uh, working together, more preventative uh, measures. Um, and then for <laughs> for Christmas, what am I asking for Santa? I haven't asked for a while now, actually. <laughs> I'm the youngest of my family, but I haven't asked for gifts in a while. But, you know, maybe a sixth championship and uh, the strength and the courage to continue pushing forward for something like that. So That's what I'll ask for Santa. <laughs> Buenos días, eh, profe Carmelina. Karen Flores para Futbolera y Túnel 19. Eh, nos sorprendió eh, bastante el tener a cinco chicas eh, jugadoras de la sub-18. Eh, el equipo de Tigres siempre se ha caracterizado por tener un equipo vasto en experiencia, jugadores de selección, pero eh, Tigres acaba de ver en generar jugadoras de fuerzas básicas. Me, me gustaría saber qué sorpresas se llevó con Deidy, con Liz, con Manei, con María Ángela y con Natalia en esta pretemporada. Thank you for the question. Yes, uh, we are typically a team that is more senior uh, in nature, meaning, you know, 25 plus sort of that average age, a little bit older, more experienced to your point. Uh, but we are fully benefiting from the great work of the institution of, of TT at the U18 level. What a fantastic coach and what she's done last season to get, you know, five players into you know, one of the best teams in Mexico, uh, you know, we now have players that are able to compete and we are mutually benefiting from them being in our camp. You know, not only are they getting exposed to a much higher level of physicality and speed of play, which is normal once you make, once you reach the, the women's level, uh, but, you know, they are genuinely talented players, but also very, very good people. Um, I think my highlight of, of camp, and we don't really talk about this too much, but was the culture, meaning that, You know, a lot of the older players embracing the younger players, them dancing together, them having moments of candidness, of, of genuine connection. Um, and I think a group that can welcome young players like that is, is in a very, very good place. And, you know, I'm excited for the future of, of this club uh, because I think the more we build out that academy structure below us, the longevity and the local talent and the identity of what we're looking for will be at the forefront. So, yeah, it's been positive, honestly, very positive, and I'm very pleased with all five players that are with us. Buen día, Vianney Rodríguez para Food Femenil. Carmelina, hola, ¿qué tal? 
Eh, una pregunta, bueno, un par de preguntas, si me permites. La primera es si tu auxiliar Ángelen va a estar por toda la temporada, ya que nos comentó por ahí que tenía un par de meses ya nada más de contrato. Y la segunda es, ¿cuál es tu opinión de esta pues, epidemia de, de lesiones de ligamento cruzado que hay alrededor del mundo? Muchas gracias. Um, so, Anne Helen is a special person. Uh, she came in for a project for one tournament. That was always the agreement. I needed some, some help and some reinforcements. Uh, we have a great staff, but we needed some more, some more experienced people around the program. And, and she did that. She came, she poured her heart and soul, uh, her spirit into the team, and she is greatly missed. Uh, you know, I'm so appreciative of the work she did. She was pivotal to the championship. She really, really was. Detail around the set pieces and bringing in all the time and experience she's had around the women's game. It only lifted us higher, and she's left a legacy behind. She's left us in a better place. And I wish her nothing, nothing but the best. Uh, and we are, you know, in the final stages of bringing in another assistant coach. So uh, exciting times ahead as well. Um, when it comes to the global game and some of the initiatives around uh, how how much players are playing, it's so variable around the league, around the world. I mean, if you look at, you know, Oceania, New Zealand, Australia, if you look at the amount of games those players are playing compared to Europe, it's more of a European problem, I think, and it is a big one. Uh, to keep adding more and more tournaments without the natural breaks and pauses, I think it's going to put a lot of stress on the clubs to be extremely careful around their programming and you're going to have to balance objectives. Um, so what do I mean? I think, you know, leagues are important to win. Playoffs are critical. That's why we have jobs. Um, but when you start adding things like a club world cup, Uh, where does that fit into the institution's priorities? And I think all institutions across the world um, are going to be very challenged to start to prioritize, you know, maybe deep in rosters, maybe start to increase roster sizes because the same group of, for, for, our, for us, 22 players cannot accomplish a club, a club World Cup, a, a Ligia run, a regular season championship. You're going to need to carry 30 players. It's going to be difficult and different, uh, but definitely achievable, but we cannot do what we're doing right now and keep adding more programming. That's not possible. As you see, players are stressed, getting injured, overuse injuries, uh, fatigue based injuries. And yeah, it's sad at the minute, but I'm expecting an adaptation from people like ourselves uh, to start moving with what's needed uh, during these times. But I do think it's good for the game. We need to, we need more. We, we all want more. Uh, it's just how we, we go about it.